And one last uh, item, of course. Let's have the Slido uh, QR code on the screen. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, any questions pertaining to the topic, uh, you can use the Slido platform to raise those questions, and I'm sure Idol up there will pick up those questions to be fielded. Yeah? All right. All right. It's over to you. Thank you, Nas. Um, you know, I would like to thank Nas because, you know, not only is he my cousin, but he's such a great host. Um, and I would just want you, know, you to know that I appreciate you and I love you. Aww. Yeah? <laughs> All right, um, what a crowd we have today. <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of them, a lot of you guys are tuning in online as well. Um, and it's great to be here, it's an honor. And with me today, I have Adila Junit, uh, a director of my, from Microsoft. So Adila, maybe you want to introduce yourself for a bit. Thank you very much, Idil, uh, and thank you for having me here today. Um, congratulations to uh, MDEC on Malaysia Digital and sort of all the initiatives that you're doing so far. A little bit about my background. So I'm the Director for Legal and Government Affairs at Microsoft Malaysia. Um, and yeah, we're very, I'm very happy to be here today to share about um, what we do. My background is I am a lawyer, um, but have worked in various sort of... Um, um, capacities, also doing policy work, um, program management, um, as well as some regulatory work in, um, in the technology space. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here today. You've been very busy. <laughs> um, okay, to start things off, um, let me just, you know, throw in a couple of numbers here and there. I, you know, I, I understand it's in the evening, you know, it's 4.40, 4.45, people are a bit tired. So let's try to make this as light as possible. Um, but before that, I'm going to throw in a couple of numbers, right, to just to set the context of, of, you know, what we're talking about, which is charting the path towards becoming the digital hub of ASEAN. Heavy, right? <laughs> but to start things off, um, the global economy, um, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard this all around um, the news, uh, articles, reports coming out. The global economy is... is retracting or contracting in nature. Um, the global GDP growth rate um, is, is currently for 2022 is at 3.2%, um, and it's gonna retract to 2.9% in 2023. Um, inflation prices are high now. Um, inflation rate is at 7.8%, right? And because of that, central banks all over the world are increasing their interest rates. Now, from, from here, we see a lot of implications, right? Supply chain, energy crisis, and, and, and et cetera, right? Which, you know, gives a, a better highlight or, or more focus on ESG matters or, or the digital economy, which is a focus for today. On the flip side, on the other hand, you know, I, I, I was looking at the economic indicators for Malaysia, and it's, it's not too bad. Um, for 2022, we are projected to get a global GDP growth rate of 6.4 to 6.6%. Um, and next year, though it will be lower at 4.3%, um, we're still outperforming most of the countries in the world. So, um, my first question to you, Adila, is you know, how important will the digital economy be moving forward for the global economy? Yeah, thank you, Adela. So, I think... Um the digital economy is really going to be a critical driver for Malaysia to be um, competitive and to sort of emerge as um, a leader, a leading economy um, to safeguard sort of the well-being of its citizens and to achieve the aspirations that it's set for itself to have sort of an inclusive, um, prosperous, a sustainable economy in the future. The digital economy and digital technology will be a key driver to achieve the long-term aspirations. Um, and uh, completely agree with you that, yeah, the global, um, socio the global economic and financial scenario is, um, um, not, doesn't look rosy, but Malaysia's not done too badly. So, um, for example, the digital economy contribution, I think the target that it set for itself was 22.6 by 2025, and that was achieved already. So we, we revised that upwards uh, to 25.5% contribution to GDP. Um, so um, I think there's a, a lot of potential there. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, so, 
So as you rightly noted out, you know, from, from 1996, um, which the digital economy uh, contributed 0% of, you know, to the GDP, now is at 22.6%, which is amazing over the past, you know, 20, 25 years. Now, looking internally or looking within Malaysia, um, the government has set out its plans, right? The government recently launched the Malaysia Digital Economic Blueprint uh, in February 2021, um, which outlines the strategy of the digital economy moving forward, um, the focus on the six trust, for example, on infrastructure, digitalization, um, looking at inclusivity. So I, I, I do know, I've, I've done my research on LinkedIn. Um, you did a stint uh, in SEMO, uh, My Digital Corp. So w what are the aspirations or inspirations uh, behind the Malaysia Digital Economic Blueprint? Yeah, so, so that's a great uh, internet investigative work there. Um, but yes, I, I'm fully aligned right now in my role as in Microsoft, uh, fully aligned with the idea of having this, setting the target, identifying the strategic thrusts to arrive at that target, and then even going further and identifying the initiatives and activities, owners and the governance structure to get there, because that, w when you plan for something, that's when you, you can achieve it. Um, so I'm um, very um, optimistic about about uh, potential to achieve those aspirations, um, which are to have a, uh, to be a regional uh, leader in the digital economy and to have, I think it was balanced, uh, sustainable, inclusive growth for everyone, leveraging on the benefits of the digital economy for this. Um, and, and this really is a great, um, very uh, inclusive and adaptable framework because as technology evolves, as capabilities evolve, the, the framework and the governance structure behind it can still accommodate for us to, to adjust along the way to hit those targets. Right. So, so what you're seeing is that it's flexible enough to accommodate for future, you know, potential changes in the future in terms of technology and how, you know, society changes, right? Um, you know, just, just touching a bit on, on that, um, you know, from the perspective of, of the industry, right? How, how does um, industry see the digital, uh, the, 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 the blueprint? And, and what are the, um, are we on the right track? Simply put, are we on the right track? Is Malaysia on the right track with, with this blueprint, with this strategy? Um, why yes or no? And, and if no, you know, what are the, the improvements that we can make um, from the public side and from the private side? Yeah, so first of all, I, I have to say it's, it's hit all the right, the right notes. It's identified in the strategic thrusts exactly the right things that need to, to, to be tackled. So talent, that's your number one driver, having the right, um, the right institutions in, in government, um, government digitalization, um, making sure that the economy uh, benefits from digital technology, Looking, sh looking after society, making sure that you have the right infrastructure to drive everything, and most importantly, making sure that the environment is secure and trustworthy, so that all of this development and technology adoption is done securely and safely. Um, so, so those are all the perfect framework uh, to have. And I think having that governance structure where you've identified agencies and ministries to lead, to support, uh, whether that might change or, or is subject to, to some discussions or refinement is, is still open for discussion, but, but having people own things, that, that really helps. Um, and I think the results show that we are, we are on track. I mean, uh, the contribution to the GDP, I believe that um, MDEC had some great news to share on achieving the uh, e-commerce adoption targets, for example, which have been exceeded. Um, and um, yeah, I think, um, I think it's, it's a great start. It's really only just phase one of the blueprint. Um, another element of it that I really welcome and I think is gonna be a great um, enabler is the whole of nation approach. So it's not just this is what the government's going to do, but this is what government, industry, society, civil society, academia all collaborate, work together on to address the issues and sort of drive the targets. Sure. Yeah. So, so on the whole of nation approach, um, if, if all of you don't know, we've actually, we actually have the Digital Investment Office 
that we collaborate together with, with MIDA um, in attracting investments into Malaysia um, and finding out the best incentives or solutions for them to come to Malaysia. Right? So that's coming in from the investment perspective. Now, talking about investments, um, I want to talk about Microsoft. Right? So, so Microsoft has been here for, for a number of years. Right, a number of years um, investing. Your, you guys are one of the huge, hugest investors in Malaysia. Um, you're doing so much uh, uh, in terms of, 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 of building infrastructure, capacity building, and whatnot. And so why, why Malaysia? Right? Why Malaysia? Um, why continue this journey with Malaysia? Yeah, no, thank you. So this is, I think it's been 30 years of Microsoft in Malaysia. And um, it's been a year since we announced our Bersama Malaysia commitment. So that's our sort of latest commitments to Malaysia. As you mentioned, our latest um, investments in Malaysia consist of having the first data center region in Malaysia, um, which um, our studies estimate that can bring up to 19,000 19, over jobs, of which over 4,500 or 4,500 will be skilled IT jobs. Um, add about you know um, 4.5 billion in new revenue over four, a four-year period, um, among other things, and that's all within an ecosystem of local partners um, and players. And to help really um, realize the benefits of something like that, we invest heavily in talent. So we've made a commitment to skill over one million Malaysians um, over uh, a three-year period, and we've actually already hit 63% uh, achievement of that target. Um, we work very closely with uh, key stakeholders that are active in this area that own these subject matters, so for example, with HRD Corp. Um, we are uh, their partner in helping them uh, have skilling and rolling out their upskilling and reskilling um, for, for, for people who you know, are looking to, to, to move up the value chain and be part of the, the digital economy. Um, so Malaysia really is um, in a great place. There's so much potential here. Um, we have uh, the resources, we have the desire, we have the vision of what we want to be. Um, and really, I think um, we have a lot of opportunity to really realize that vision. Um, if we can have that greater clarity and crispness on our regulatory and um, policy environment that sort of matches up to international standards and benchmarks so then we really can be on par and, and, and globally competitive with what we have to offer here to make Malaysia um, kind of attractive and competitive from uh, a regulatory policy environment as well as uh, security and safety that comes from having that uh, clarity. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, and, and, and you mentioned the policy earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that a bit later. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the grand context of things, right, um, from coming from the industry side, the private side, how can, how can the private side, uh, uh, or what does the private side feel about making um, ASEAN as the digital hub of, of uh, Malaysia as a digital hub of ASEAN, that matter? No, so it's, uh, it's, exact, it's exactly that. There's so much potential. Malaysia has stated its aspiration, and it's identified the key drivers that it needs to, uh, to execute uh, to achieve this vision. So I'd say we're at the start of this journey. Um, so why Malaysia is really the potential, and let's, let's all execute on that together. Um, I think there is a great potential in particular from the pers security perspective. So recognizing that digital technology is a driver, the added competitive advantage is to make sure that that is adopted securely and safely in a trusted way. Um, so that's something that um, Microsoft, for example, is um, heavily invested in. Um, we've recently um, um, worked on uh, partnering the government in improving our cybersecurity um, from a private sector perspective, given our experience and um, exposure in, uh, in the cybersecurity, um, uh, threat intelligence, um, and investing in solutions with, with uh, um, sort of world-class security capabilities. That's an area that we really hope to be able to, to, to partner um, stakeholders in to give that extra push to Malaysia's competitiveness. Yeah. I'm going to throw you a curveball here. Um, do we have the right talent for the digital economy? 
Um, and you know, what, what are the challenges you know, coming from the private side in terms of, of talent? So we have, we have the resources, we have, we have human capital, but whether it's the right talent, I think that's something all of us need to really work on to make that a reality. So we do work with MDEC, um, we work with HRD Corp, we actually work with a lot of our customers as well um, to help um, skill their, uh, their talent and for their resources to help skill citizens. So, so that's the great thing about talent, right? It's, it's malleable. So you, don't, you, don't, you aren't born skilled, you can skill, there's so much opportunity to upskill. And now with technology and with so many stakeholders interested in this area, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity, uh, but that sense of urgency, that sense that um, we need to compete, I think hopefully can drive our talent to realize that the opportunity is out there for them. So just to reach out and uh, make use of, of the opportunities that are available. Um, yeah, I mean, the more can be done to make things accessible, to make things um, attractive for people to skill themselves. So I look forward to working together with uh, parties such as MDEC um, to, to drive this, yeah. Fantastic. Um, okay, so um, back on that policy topic. So um, a bit of, of clarity in terms of regulations and, and policy, right? So what are the challenges right now that, that, that we see in, in policy making here in Malaysia, you know, specifically on, on the digital economy? Yeah, so uh, there are a lot of policies um, <laughs> that affect the ability of Malaysia to really be that hub uh, for the digital economy. Um, things that uh, might be more um, accessible to, to average the average person would be things like our data protection laws, which I do understand were going to be passed in this session, but um, that looks like it, some delays might happen. Um, so I think, and also our ratification of the CPTPP was really good, uh, a good step towards recognizing that we want to um, embrace international norms. Yep. So having that norm, but also making it clear and transparent, not just for investors, but also persons who want to participate in any digital economy activity that is run out of Malaysia, or that is, um, that is using Malaysia as a base, that actually would, would be very helpful. Um, so it's, good, it's been good engaging with the stakeholders in charge of those policies, um, but I really welcome that discussion and that debate and the sort of joint effort to, to make Malaysia's position known, make it, make it compatible with international standards, Great. and to make that a competitive advantage. Great, thank you for that. Um, you know, definitely, you know, in, in, in some ways, public-private partnerships is important, right? So now, now there's a new term, right? People-public-private partnerships, right? So, so that's, that's interesting to look into as well. Um, we have approximately two minutes left. So um, my, my last question for you. Um, ES, ESG is a hot topic now all over the world. Um, you know, when I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Shark Tank, I watch like Shark Tank all the time, um, and recently in the in the more recent episodes, whenever a company, whenever you know entrepreneurs pitch their ideas for these sharks, check it out. Um, there there is always that impact in mind, right? So they want to do something that will have an impact on on the environment, on society, or 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 something that that can give back to to the people, right? Alongside, you know, making money. So, ESG. Um, you know, how how does Microsoft's approach? You know, in in in, in what, what is Microsoft's approach in ESG? And you know, how does this uh, affect the direction of the company in the future? So, um, I I love that recognition that really everything we do should be sustainable and and that includes sustainable, not just from an environmental perspective, but from the perspective of working in a community, um, of having basically business activities and products that serve people. Um, so, I mean, sustainability is a, is a really core value for Microsoft, um, and um, we really encourage adoption of technology because that actually is um, something that really helps people be 
more environmentally um, um, sustainable and sustainable in general. Um, uh, for example, um, our uh, data centers, we've made a commitment for them to be 100% based on renewable energy. It's actually, everything that we do, 100% based on renewable energy by 2025. And we actually have a commitment to be carbon, not just carbon neutral, but carbon negative by 2030, by also investing in technologies that remove carbon from the environment. Um, and that's something that's really important because um, I think we can all see that climate change is accelerating. And um, really, we, we need to be looking to not just growth, but sustainable growth that can also serve the future generations. Um, so we really welcome the inclusion of that in government targets and recently in targets for MSMEs as well. So this needs to be something that it's not just large corporations that look at, but everybody sort of like incorporate that in their way of living in the decisions that they make about how they do things, about the products that they use. Um, so yeah, that's uh, something that I really welcome. Thank you so much, Adila. And time. Um, uh, I'm afraid that we can't take questions in the, uh, you know, in the interest of time. But you know, we'll 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 be lingering around. And and if anyone does want to ask us any questions, uh, feel free. Thank you for your time today. Uh, appreciate you making the time uh, to come over on a on a Wednesday evening. And and uh, hope to collaborate with you uh, soon. Thank you. Thanks very much. And thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you very much uh, to our panelists, Adila Junid, Director of Legal Government Affairs, Microsoft, as well as our dear, good-looking moderator. That's right, Mr. Muhammad Ali. 